recording for this, which will be posted later. Again, this is the low priority transaction LPT export e-tagging training. I'm Cynthia Hinman, and I am joined by a number of subject matter experts who are here to help answer questions if I need some help. And I also have Dottie on the line with me, who is uh, my co-host and is going to be assisting me um, if you uh, have questions in the chat that I don't see um, or if you raise your hand. So we will be stopping from time to time to take your questions throughout the presentation. The presentation is currently posted on the ISO website. And Dottie, if you can put that link again. Thank you, Dottie. Um, the the uh, training is located there. Um, when I have the recording available, I will post that also. That'll probably be later today or tomorrow. Um, just the first thing I want to emphasize here is this uh, pertains to LPT exports. We're going to talk about what LPT is. But if this does not apply to imports or high priority um, tags. We're, we're focusing in on LPT exports. Um, in this session. So let's begin. As usual, <clears throat> please keep yourself muted unless you have a question. And as I mentioned, there will be time for questions between each section. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, you can raise your hand uh, and Dottie will let me know that, um, that, that you are waiting or <coughs> excuse me, you can put your question in the chat um, and we'll make sure that we get those answered. With that, let's get started. Today we are going to uh, cover uh, the LPT export e-tagging. Um, we'll start with a little introduction where I'm going to talk about the key takeaways and also some clarifying definitions. After that, We'll talk about the day ahead e-tagging processes, followed by real-time e-tagging processes, and then a wrap up with a summary um, and what you need to do and some available resources. Um, the times that are on the slide are estimates of how long I think things are going to take. They could be faster or they could be shorter, but just uh, trying to plan out our time here. So who is this training really for? Well. Um, primarily, it's for those folks who submit LPT export e-tags. Additionally, it's going to cover those folks who are receiving those exports uh, from the California ISO, um, and that includes WEIM entities. And third, we want to make sure that the policymakers that are involved with uh, California ISO and e-tagging exports are up to date on what the processes are. So uh, let's move on to our first section, which is the introduction. And <clears throat> as I was putting this training together, every, uh, every person I talked to, every one of my subject matter experts, when, when it came right down to it after gathering all the information said, if you wanted to sum the presentation up in one slide, this is what it would say. LPT export e-tags must be submitted after the market clears, both day ahead and real time. Otherwise, they will be denied. Uh, temporarily by holding space. Right. I'm sorry, you can are. you uh, put I think that's Glenn. Okay, thank you. All right, so, <clears throat> so the ISO needs to be sure from a reliability standpoint that the megawatt quantities on the export tags are confirmed. Therefore, we need to make sure that those LPT export tags have, uh, um, have uh, cleared the market, meaning that they, they can't pass validation if they don't have a supporting energy schedule. So LPT means low priority transaction, which is a scheduling priority. Now we're going to talk about scheduling priorities and why they are important. So scheduling priorities are a tool used to determine the sequence of clearing exports if needed during times of limited supply. 
The scheduling priorities are a tool that the ISO uses to make decisions about clearing all types of market products and constraints, including exports. And the ISO prioritizes the export schedules based on how they were initially bid into the market. These priorities are designed to protect high priority exports that cover our neighbor's load serving obligations. You can see that <clears throat> ETCs and TORs have high, the highest priority, while economic bids and self schedules have lower priorities. You can see uh, when we're going to focus on the low priorities in this presentation, which is why I have them highlighted in yellow. Um, and <clears throat> the low priority exports um, are transactions that are not backed by RA, they're not pre-registered as high priority, and they don't have ETCs, TORs, or CRN rights. So that is what scheduling priorities are. All of these low priority exports must be listed as firm provisional generation on your e-tag. So the correct acronym for this on the tag is G-FP, and the next slide will look at some examples. If an export is a low priority export, the product field and the market path must be labeled as GFP. In the physical path, there should be a yes in the miscellaneous info field and the miscellaneous info box should be completed. Particularly, the, we're gonna look at the CAISO underscore priority underscore type. As you can see, it's highlighted there in red. So you want to make sure that that, that miscellaneous info field is uh, completed and correct, and you're also using uppercase letters because all of those, if you don't do that, there could be problems uh, with your tag, it will be denied. So this was already implemented with RSCE phase two track one, so everyone should already be doing this. GFP, which is the product, provides everyone on the tag with the signal that the transaction can be curtailed in specific situations. So let's take a, another look at that. As I mentioned, GFP is generation firm provisional, meaning that it's not firm energy, and it's sold with agreed upon terms with regard to curtailment. In fact, I'm gonna give you the WECC glossary definition of GFP. This product may be interrupted only if the interruption is within the recall time for conditions allowed by applicable provisions governing interruption of service as mutually agreed upon by the parties. A GFP product cannot be interrupted for economic reasons. So that's what GFP is. Now, if we look at the bottom of the slide, we can see that these <clears throat> GFP um, uh, energy products can be curtailed via the day ahead market processes. If we, uh, if it's this schedule clears half, the ISO can manually adjust this product under the following conditions, and I'll read them to you. Um, restore contingency reserves following a contingency. Deploy existing contingency reserves where a re-procurement of contingency reserves is deficient. Maintain reliability, including EEA three conditions, where armed load is utilized to restore deficient contingency reserves in conjunction with ETAG curtailments in order to maintain required contingency reserves. You'll find this wording in the Market Ops BPM section 6.3.2, and there's more information in there if you want to get uh, further details on this. So I have uh, that, a link to that in the resources when we get to the end of the presentation. <clears throat> I also want to point your attention to the blue box on the right that has the priority types. So the first one is DALPT, there's an asterisk there, and that one is DALPT is used for both DAECON and DALPT because they have the same curtailment priority, so we're just using the DALPT for both. These let the SYNC BA know that in certain situations, the ISO could reduce the awards. I also want to note that for the day ahead, <clears throat> your, the megawatt value should be based on the cleared RUC values, not IFM results. They could be different. 
So next we're gonna move on to the day ahead tagging processes. But before we do, I wanna stop and see if there are any questions. So I am looking to see if there's any hands raised and currently I do not see any. And then also there are no questions currently in the chat. Terrific, and if you think of something, there will be other opportunities to ask questions. All right. So let's start with day ahead e-tagging. We're gonna go over the timeline, I'm gonna give you an example, and then I'll show you about the results that are gonna be available in CMRI. I mean, the reports that will be available in CMRI. So here's the day ahead LPT export timeline. I first wanted to, to mention that in these examples, when I say get the scheduling coordinator does this or the scheduling coordinator does that, I'm talking about the person who actually performs the activity, whether it's the scheduling coordinator submits an export bid, it's the person at that entity that does that, or they submit an e-tag, whatever, whatever the case may be. Additionally, I, I interchange e-tag and tag. They both mean the same thing when I'm talking. So I just wanted to clarify that before I moved on. So let's take a look at what we have here. This is, uh, this is the happy path. This is what um, the process that should be occurring in the day ahead. So the FC will submit that day ahead export bid. The day ahead market runs and clears. It publishes around 1300. The SC confirms uh, the megawatt award from RUC in CMRI, and then they can submit their e-tag that's equal to that RUC award for their LT, LPT export. The ISO is gonna immediately validate that tag and the SC can view their results in their e-tagging system. So that, that is what we're looking for. That's the, the timeline as it stands. I'm gonna give you another example. Basically, this is the what could be happening today, well, I know some folks, they're doing their tagging way ahead of, um, of the market running. Um, that's, an, that's just a procedure. But um, in this example, you can see that the first thing that's happening here is the SC submitting that e-tag and the ISO is validating it. <clears throat> and the scheduling coordinator sees those results and this happens before the day ahead um, bid is, is submitted or even before um, the market runs and clears. That uh, will be, that tag will be denied. We need to make sure that, <clears throat> that um, there is a market award that we can, so we can count on the fact that those megawatts are going to be available. One other thing that I want to mention Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait a bit on that, but um, so the scheduling coordinator needs to simply put, uh, wait until after the market clears and publishes before um, submitting their tag in the day ahead. Um, this report, if you go to CMRI right now, you'll see this report, although it is not populating yet. RSEE, Phase two, track two is scheduled to go, <laughs> excuse me, scheduled to go live on April 15th. And then this report will start populating. Um, and I have a mock-up of it uh, in, in the next slide. So we'll take a look at the RUC export schedules by marker priority types, and you'll see what, uh, what it is going to look like. So let's take a look at that. So it'll have the trade date, the, re the SCID, the resource, the scheduling point. You see the market priority type is also a column there and that will include all the market priority types, not just the low priority. Um, it will include if there is a CRN, let's say you have an ETC, it will have the CRN number and the CRN type. That's gonna be followed by the 20, each hour, 24 hours, and it will show the megawatt values for each one of those hours for the day ahead. That's really everything I have to say about the day ahead. So I'm gonna stop again for questions and then I will move on to the real time. I see Callie has raised her hand. Callie? 
Hi, it's Callie Wells with WPTF. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I just had, I guess, a general question. I think it applies to both the day ahead and the real time cases, but I, if you don't mind, I can ask it here. Um, sure. So back on your previous slide where you said if they submit the tags similar to how the practices are done today, they can kind of submit them even before the day ahead market actually runs and clears, it'll be denied. Um, mm -hmm. So can you remind me what the business case was? Because I think you said this was from the RSE policy effort. What the business case was or what issues are occurring today that is now wanting, all, that the case is now wanting all the SEs to wait until after the day ahead market clears? Because it seems that changing this practice would just inundate the Kaiser with all these e tags at the same time as well as the other BAs that also have to approve them at the same time. Um, and it seems like it can cause a, a lot of headaches and issues if everyone's getting all these tags to approve at the same time instead of kind of over a longer period of time. Yeah. So the reason why is we need to ensure that the information that's on the tag is actually available, right? That it actually was awarded in the market, that there's more certainty um, that the um, that the values on the tag are actually um, an award from the market. It's a reliability concern. And I, I guess I'll open it up to, uh, to Danny. Danny, did you want to add to that? Danny Johnson? I yeah, I, th I think, Cynthia, you largely captured what I was going to say, that the policy was looking to make sure that the tags that the KISO was proving can actually be backed by market schedules. And what we found is that if we auto approve the tax prior to running either the IFM and RUC or, or the HASP, we could get into the situation where we had approved tags sitting out there that we weren't able to actually support from resources internal to the KISO. And that that created a negative outcome for both the KISO and our neighboring BAAs from a certainty of the energy security of that tag. Okay, that's helpful. So it's today, basically, once an e-tag is submitted, the KISO will automatically validate it, um, and there's no other opportunity to adjust them once you guys actually get so awards? The NASB rules put some pretty strict timelines on how long a tag can be submitted before it's validated. So. Uh, with that rule set right now, uh, if we don't have a market award to support uh, the tagged megawatt quantity, it would not pass validation. Okay, that is helpful. Okay, thank you. Can't you just also adjust the tags down after they're submitted? So when the model uh, day ahead market uh, finishes, you guys can just adjust the tags so that we can tag them earlier. So the KISO can uh, adjust the tags, but it's an approved tag, and that adjustment has to be then accepted by every other party on the tag. And so to us, it made more sense to just make sure that before we're approving a tag, we can support the tag and not create this feedback loop where, where there's multiple other parties who then have to kind of accept this adjustment after the fact. I also want to remind folks that this is just for the LPT exports. This doesn't impact any other types of tags. Cynthia, can you hear me all right? Yes. Yeah, this is uh, Corey with TEA. Uh, I joined a little late here, but just want to be clear. When is this policy going to be enacted? So, actually, you can start doing it right now. Um, we're looking for RSCE phase two track two, the, that policy initiative is scheduled to go live right now. It's scheduled for April 15th, uh, 2024. And there's gonna be a market sim starting in a couple weeks as well. Cynthia, this is Heather from Kaiso Legal. And I just wanted to remind folks that the tariff does require GFP tagging for LPT exports. And so we're talking about the implementation steps that are going to um, start in April, but I did want to be clear, the tagging requirements are in place now. Thank you. Are there any other questions? So when, when will tags like yes. actually start? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, go for it. 
when will they actually start getting denied um, before you get a day ahead award? Because I believe right now, like, you can tag a day ahead LPT and it will not be denied. That will be um, when our SEE phase two track two goes into effect. Which is the okay. April date. Right, yeah. okay, thank you. We also have a few other hands raised. Um, I see that Trisha, you had your hand raised. Yes, so I guess my question goes back to, um, we have, you know, some RA where we have a resource supplied that should make our exports standard. Sometimes they don't get fully awarded. And my understanding is it's kind of like an all or nothing. So if we're expecting something to be generator firm provisional, can we tag that? And then what happens when it comes back? Or we're expecting to be generator firm, but then it comes back as LPT. Um, how, how are you guys going to deal with those situations where there's a contract out there, we put the unit, but it's not awarded for whatever reason? Maybe the unit went on outage and we weren't notified or a host of other reasons. How is the CAISO going to deal with that? Because we would have already tagged this as generator firm um, because we had the resource to back it up, but then it comes back LPT. So what's in place to deal with that situation? I'm gonna see if Danny, do you wanna do you wanna address that one? Yeah, I think this is a this is a much more nuanced concern. If if there's RA to back the export, then it should have been registered as PT. And I think part of the validation process would would be making sure that that resource is available and bid into the market. And to the extent that's not occurring, but please follow up with us offline and, and we can figure out what's going on. If the resource is on outage and ultimately uh, the transaction is a economy energy purchase out of the ISO market, we would expect it to follow these, the the rule set that Cynthia is highlighting today. Yeah, that that's not um, what generally happens. We'll have a contract, and sometimes, or sometimes the even though we you know have a contract that tells us we have say 50 megawatts and we bid in 30, our REC won't come back as 30 or as even the 50, which which is interesting to me. So my question would be, you know, in those situations, um, how is the market going to validate that? Is it just going to be a market adjustment later that you'll say, oh, you weren't awarded your full amount? And then, like, a note in the tag that tells us we need to retag it. Um, we do typically check those day ahead, but on the real time, if we're putting that in and that happens, there's far less time to pull one tag and submit another tag. So, timing wise, you know, that also becomes an issue. I, I definitely understand the concern, Trisha. To, if there's a RA contract for 50 megawatts and it's, it's registered as a 50 megawatt PT export, and that's not getting cleared by RUC. That that speaks to something else that's going on. That that if you can follow up with us offline, uh, we would be happy to look into for you. Okay, that's good to know. We'll we'll make sure to use the city ticket process with those if if those occur um, in the future. Thank you. Other question. Yep, we have a few other hands up. I see Amy, your hand is up. You can come off mute and ask your question, please. Hi, good morning. So my question kind of goes to the earlier discussion about flooding all these BAs with the tags after the market clears and, and the results are published. My question is, what is the ISO doing to make sure that the market publishes on time every time? Because we've had a lot of days where the market's not closing on time and now we're not able to put our tags out because you don't want us to tag it early, but now you're pushing everybody's timeline off. So what what is happening to make sure that things are published on time from the ISO's perspective? Great question. Um, I'm going to defer to one of my subject matter experts. Sherry, do you want to take that one? Okay. Danny? I'm sorry, I'm yeah, trying I to unmute. I, I was oh, trying oh, to sorry. unmute. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> okay. So, yeah. To, so, we 
of course, are always trying to improve our day ahead processes so that we publish day ahead results by 1300. 1300 is what our tariff says that we will publish day ahead results by. Um, in the event that we don't publish day ahead results by 1300, market participants are notified via, you know, MNS messages, other types of messaging that we expect day ahead um, awards to be published by a specific time. So right now, as you're waiting, and again, I want to remind folks, this is really only for those LPT exports. You can tag everything else ahead of time. It won't be auto denied. Wheels, firm, you know, um, all of those the PT exports, all of those types of resources, you can still tag ahead of time. So it's just this very, you know, smaller select group of, of resources. So currently what happens right now, you should be already be tagging these as such. We understand that we're making you wait until after day ahead RUC publishes. And that's to ensure the receivers of that energy know if it's firm or not, right? So it's really kind of, a, a, it's not only just for the ISO, but it's also for whoever's sourcing their imports from the ISO. How firm is that energy, right? So right now we publish, you tag ahead of time at 1530 every day we go look at what is your final RUC energy award and we adjust those tags to match. We adjust them down to whatever your final RUC award is. And that's for all tags, not just these low priority export tags. That's for import, that's for all of the tags out there, okay? That's not going to change. The one thing that might change with that timing specifically is that if our day ahead isn't published by 1430, we still want to give participants a full hour to view those final RUC awards and adjust tags, submit these new tags for these you know, low priority exports, and we will give them one hour. You know, if, if, if schedules are not public, we wanna give you a full hour from the time day ahead RUC publishes to the time you can tag before we make those auto adjustments. So markets not published until, you know, 1445, we will give you a full hour past 1530. We're gonna give you that full hour. We're gonna make those adjustments at 1630 instead of 1530. Now I know that some of these, you know, if we, the, the, the question really is around well, what if day has late? Okay, well, um, still talking about this very, you know, small select source of, of tags, right? It, you have until, and I, we understand that the, some of this tagging could, you know, run into, um, it's no longer a pre-scheduling timeframe, right? We have a lot of people that are East Coast time people that are submitting tags on East Coast time. so it may cause them to, you know, kind of put this um, burden on their real-time folks instead of their pre-scheduling folks. Um, but you really do have until, you know, that first half run to still submit a day ahead low priority export tag. It's not gonna be denied. You don't have, if you have the day ahead LPT award, you can tag it up and until um, HASP is, is running. So I'm not, I'm not sure if, if that was a long explanation and I don't know if that answered your question and maybe some of the other questions that people have about that. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. Um, are there, who's the next question, Dottie? Um, and keep yeah, in mind, it's Kurt. Oops, I'm sorry. I was going to say, keep in mind, we haven't gone into the real-time uh, process yet. So if some folks might want to hold their questions, but um, we'll continue taking them now. Who is next, Daddy? Um, currently, we have one more question with a hand raised. It's Yesenia. You can come off mute and ask your question. Hi, um, Yesenia from PG&E. Just talking about the scheduling process, I think the concern is, is that a lot of times when we submit the tags, 
and it goes through the approval process, that's where the persons who are tagging could potentially catch errors in any part of the tag. And the later that that gets postponed, the harder it is to fix. So, you know, we, we do the tagging process where we're communicating directly, but then it isn't until we submit the tag that it goes through the approval process that we could potentially catch any other errors with OASIS numbers for other legs of the transmission, potentially with the, with the market path. And I think the biggest concern is that the later it publishes, the harder it is for us to fix those mistakes because people could potentially be home. Yes, it might pass off to the real time, but the real time isn't familiar necessarily with what's going on. Um, so I just want to state that. And um, the second part is, I understand that you're saying it's a small part or small percentage of <clears throat> these LPTs, but do you have an idea of what the percentage is that will be LPT compared to the full amount that you receive every day? You know, I I do not. I don't know if someone else here does. Um, do any of my SMEs have, have know that percentage? Cynthia, this is Danny from the ISO. I, I was going to say, we didn't, when we looked at this change, we weren't looking at the number of tags that would be impacted. It was more based on principles of ensuring that there weren't tags out there that were approved that the ISO didn't didn't know it could support with the market award. Thanks, Danny. Heather, did you have something you wanted to add? Right. I think I'm just going to deliver a similar message to Danny, which is, you know, we, we do understand this is, you know, announcing a change in practice to folks, which is why we're having this training and, and our teams are available for follow up to, to help anyone um, work through kind of company specific issues. Um, but I, I just want to remind folks, we did make this change for reliability reasons. Um, it was approved by our board as both supporting the KISO reliability as well as enhancing reliability and other balancing authorities by providing full visibility into the, the, the firmness of the energy. Um, so I just wanted to provide that context, Cynthia, as we move into real time. Thanks, Heather. Scotty, is there anyone who up the looks like Bernardo has a question? Bernardo, you want to come off mute and ask your question? I'm sorry, we're not hearing you. <clears throat> Make sure you're not double muted. Okay. It um, looks like he may have lowered his hand, but I do see that Cam has um, their hand up. Hey, good morning. Can you hear I'm, me? Oh, oh, go ahead. Yes, I can yeah. hear you. This is uh, Cam with Dynasty Power. Um, Real-time tags are considered LPT, correct, based off your first slide. So I guess my question is, is typically real-time tags don't necessarily have market awards until the HASP process. So um, when would you be able to submit real-time LPT or real-time econ tags in order to um, go about that process? Are those considered LPT under the same, under these same rules or are we also delaying submitting RT tags until after a HASP award? So that's a great question, Kim, and I'm going to go over some examples. Now, keep in mind, this is just the low priority tags, right? So the, this is the RT, uh, LPT, not the RTPT. Um, it's just the low priority real-time tags. But the next section, I'm going to go over some examples of uh, what, what the real-time process looks like. Okay? Fair enough. I'll wait. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, are there any other questions, Daddy, before we move on? I do not see any other hands raised at this time. Um, so we are good to move on. All right. <clears throat> Hello? Yeah. Uh, this is Bernardo. But it's Hello, master. Bernardo. Yeah, I, I do have a question. So uh, on after the ADS awards, we still have a timeline on 
how fast we have to submit tags. Otherwise, they are subject to the 15 minute market and you could be reduced if the tag is not approved. Is that correct? So the you are required to wait until after the the market runs and the day ahead it's 1300 and in the real time we're just going to go through some examples now on that and we'll maybe that'll answer your question um, as to the timing but yes there is a there is a time frame within which you're going to need to submit those real-time tags yeah, okay? so, yeah, I hear you I hear you. it's just that now it seems like um, it, it's just everything gets tighter um, okay all right understood Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's let's move on, and um, we can uh, go through some more timelines for real time, and then we'll stop again for questions. So again, I have a scenario here um, for anybody who's taken any of our market classes uh, workshops. Uh, you know that after the day ahead results are published to 1300, that um, scheduling coordinators can begin submitting their real time bids. So in this example, we're looking at Monday and Tuesday. And uh, so on Monday, uh, <clears throat> after the market closes, our SCs can start submitting their real-time export bids for the real-time market on Tuesday. Uh, on Tuesday, in this example, we happen to be looking at the trade hour of three o'clock. The real-time market closes at T minus 75, which in this example is 1.45 p.m. And then the results are published around T59, T60, um, around that particular time, which in this example is 2.01. Uh, the, uh, the process should be then that is the time when the scheduling coordinators can start submitting their e-tags and they need to submit them by T40 and caveat here, which is the asterisk at the bottom. The T40 is the deadline to be considered for the first FMM, in FMM interval of the hour. Um, the NASB e-tag submission deadline is T minus 20, which is T, which is 240 in this example. And we'll talk about what happens if you submit the tag um, between the T40 and the T20. But in this example, generally speaking, you're going to want to get your tag in by T minus 40. So it's it can be considered for the beginning of that trade hour. The ISO is then going to validate that tag and it will um, pass that validation because there is a market award in HASP. One thing I want to note uh, regarding your HASP schedule, there's no ability to decline your HASP award and return to your higher, if you have a higher day ahead market export schedule. You need to tag the uh, megawatts that are in the HASP schedule. So that, that is the, uh, the timeline for the LTP exports. Again, these are just the low priority ones in real time. So uh, an example of what would happen if you tagged prior to the results being published. In this example, same thing, but just like the day ahead, the SC is submitting that export e-tag at 1.30, which is before the results are published in HASP and that tag would be denied. I'm going to go on and provide another example that people have asked about and that is what happens if you tag after that T40 deadline but you're tagging before that NASB tagging deadline of T20. What's going to happen is <clears throat> Um, the ITS is going to send an explicit zero to the market, but you can still tag up to T20. Um, you won't be reward awarded for at least the first FMM interval. So going forward, you still can tag, but it, you will probably you won't be awarded for the beginning of that three o'clock hour for the 15 minute interval. Maybe the first, maybe the second. Um, the final uh, example I want to provide and um, then uh, we'll take questions shortly after that, is has to do uh, with a concern that WEIM folks have expressed. So up at the top there, you can see the, the, the happy path that we're looking for as far as the tagging timeline. 
And we understand that folks gather those export tags by T77 and T57 in order to be in time for those base schedule tests at T75 and T55. So going forward, we're gonna recommend that you work with your energy suppliers to ensure that the energy is properly tagged and base scheduled after receiving that confirmation in the market award process. Keep in mind, you, the result that you're going to be getting from on those tags is going to be more reliable because it's going to be based on market results. So I'm just going to show you the CMRI report here real quick. Um, again, there is a CMRI report for the real-time export schedule market priority types, um, very similar to the day ahead one, so I'm not going to go over it again. You can take a look at it in CMRI right now, although it's not populating. And also in ADF, the priorities are going to be listed as new roles in the instruction type. And the bottom right instruction box is only for one resource at a time. So if there's multiple um, priorities, which there can be, um, it will show up as multiple row, rows on the ADF screen. I'm going to stop again for questions before we wrap up. And Dottie, okay, perfect. Can... And yep, there are several hands raised. So we can start with Tricia. I saw your hand raised first. So you can come off mute and ask your question, please. So, and looking at the timeline again, we're going to get that market award at T59. We have one and a half minutes to tag it to make the EIM tagging deadline and not have that impact our sufficiency test evaluation for the T55. That seems a little bit um, short sighted on Kaiso's spot, spot for this. So, it, it seems unfair that you're not going to look at moving other deadlines, whether it's the EIM tagging deadline, whether it's something else in that base schedule. Yes, I realize we have till T40, but there are potential financial implications if we don't have a generator, you know, we're relying on this energy to not move a generator to do something else. So it just, um, again, there's EIM and potential financial implications for this that it seems like you guys are just kind of bypassing rather quickly. Thank you for that comment. Does someone want to respond? Danny, Heather? Yeah, yeah, sure, Cynthia. I, I, I wouldn't say that we are bypassing any complications. We recognize that this is a change and this increases the burden on EIM entities. To the extent there's a desire to, to make other modifications, I think that KISO is a, a willing partner I do need to point out that that T57 deadline that feeds into the T55 RFC is not a KISO rule that, that is set at the discretion of the EIM BAAs. Uh, to the extent that there's modifications there that, that could potentially occur, that that may be one solution. I also need to point out that the T55 RFC is not, is not the final binding RFC. That occurs at T40. So I, I think we're open to solutions that that could make this change uh, easier for the stakeholder community. Uh, but right now, this is what the change is to make sure that we don't have tags that, that are approved that the CAISO BAA does not know it can support. Yeah, and I guess I get that, but the scheduling sides of the house are, um, you know, the ones that are going to be seeing these market awards, putting the tags out. And now there's additional burden and additional communication that needs to happen between both sides of the house when that switches to that T40 base schedule. And it's not just a simple, oh, here it is in potential impact to, to the BAs for this particular test. And so I understand the need. I am supportive of the fact that we are now actually having something that is telling us like, yes, this has been validated through the market process. We do know that we have the energy for this award. Like I understand all of the reasons for that and I am behind that. However, in rolling this out without like talking to the stakeholders and seeing what the impact is going to be to them and saying it's going live April 1st, deal with the timelines is just not sufficient. Like, you know, more conversations around what we could do to make this work for all your stakeholders was definitely needed before we got to this point. 
Sure, Trisha. So, Trisha, we, we, we I, can hear, have, hear Danny. Let me let me take a first stab at it. And I, sure. I think we hear that, and, and we're working on those communication patterns. We did try to do some advanced outreach once we learned the implementation steps of the board approved policy that everyone participated in in RSE phase two. And, and we absolutely commit to do more. It's why we're releasing this training now in February. Please reach out to the teams. I think we're we're prepared to support folks, but do know that we gave a lot of consideration to other options that don't work for a variety of reasons. I heard a, a suggestion of moving the T minus 40 deadline. We looked into that. We, we can talk to people through about, you know, why that's not going to work. So I, I don't want to say that this is the solution was come to lightly. There was a lot of consideration. We're, we're happy to have those discussions. And, and I think we do apologize if folks feel that they, they're hit with this out of the blue, um, but we are here for follow up um, from now in the coming months. Yeah, T40 isn't really my concern. And in, and in day ahead, there, there are some concerns there, but definitely much easier to navigate those. The hasp of the T59 and the T57, you have to get the award in ADS, make sure you're checking to see if, you know, it came back LPT standard, comparing those two, and then making sure you have the right tag out there in time to pass the market validation is really, you know, for that last run and that last EIM tagging deadline. Um, that's the part where it's like, that's not a lot of time. So is there anything that could happen on the front end of, you know, that market closes at T75, could that be moved to T70? And then, you know, we get five minutes earlier that that HASP results are published. Like those are kind of the timelines that I'm looking at, not, you know, necessarily pushing everything else back, but a minute and a half to meet the EIM tagging deadline is, is a really, really tight, um deadline and if there's other things going on in the training room you know you have a phone call or there's other other things like that's easily you know missed um you know for higher priority things as well so i just that's where where the real concern is on the real time side thanks trisha that, that was helpful in kind of understanding where you were looking on the timeline closer to the t75 not the t40 let us follow up. I, I'm, I have a feeling the teams went through this. We can get back to you and, and others who may be interested again, follow up with your client, with your customer contacts here. Um, and, and we can get back to you to see if there's anything that can be done before summer of 2024. Thank you. That's appreciated. There's one other thing that I want to mention, and I, I was going to mention it later, and that is that, <clears throat> and this isn't going to, answer your question, but um, we can, you can start doing this right now um, to, to kind of work out the process and the kinks in it that, that might, might help. There's nothing keeping folks from waiting until we implement RSCE phase two, track two, to begin doing this. Just, just wanted to add that. Um, who has the next question? So, a, so this is Changbo from the PMO on the implementation side. So um, I do appreciate all the comments and concerns too. And uh, as um, um, I did hear the comment about, you know, being surprised about this implementation, I wanted to just kind of add my thoughts and then also seek more feedback on how we can learn from this. So um, as we discovered the impact, um, we looked to see if there were any updates that we would have needed to make um, in our requirements and such, and just went back and reviewed those to make sure that we were still implementing according to the requirements that we've published to our customers. And um, we did want to emphasize that for this implementation, the BRS for RSEE2 Track 2 has been published since last year. Excuse me. <clears throat> and it has not changed, <clears throat> excuse me, as part of, um, you know, this information that we're providing you. So we are sh sharing more details about the implementation now because we feel that it is relevant and we understand the magnitude of the impact. Um, but again, the, um, the BRS for this implementation has been published for some time. So the feedback that I'd like to open up to, maybe not in this forum, but just going forward is what other types of information could we provide in the BRS if there is any that um, can, um, you know, prevent this type of issue from you know, happening again. So just think about that. And then again, we'll, um, we'll be happy to take feedback on that side of the house as well. So 
Okay. Thank you. We do have a few other hands raised. Um, I see okay. that Kaylee Wells, you have your hand raised. You can come off mute and ask your question. Hi, it's Callie Wells with WPTF. Um, I had a, a question that actually was along the same lines of the conversation you had with just Tricia, but Trang, I'll uh, go ahead and respond just based on my experience is a lot of times when you go through the policy process, you have one group of participants that are fully engaged in that policy process. And then when the handoff happens or occurs to the implementation side and more details come out in the DRS, that's kind of sometimes usually a different set of participants are following that. So, you know, I don't know if there's a way to better inform back the group on the policy side of things when stuff like this comes up in the, as you guys kind of work through the implementation details. Um, but that was just kind of my initial reaction based on, you know, my experience follow, following, you know, policy process through implementation. So um, I really appreciate, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go for it. I was going to switch over to my original question. <laughs> go ahead oh, yeah, I, I did want to make a comment on that because I do really appreciate that. And, I, um, you know, on the ISO side, we actually have noticed that as well, and especially with this. And so one of the things that we were doing to try to um, close that gap uh, um, immediately for this um, and then learn from and um, implement as part of our normal implementation process is that we did a specific outreach to, um, to the policy um, stakeholders that were engaged for RSEE um, for this training even um, to announce that we were going to have this conversation. And so that's something that we're going to try to leverage and ongoing implementation communication as well is to make sure that we're aware of and have that continuity um, for our customers throughout the different uh, departments and divisions in their organizations. So I think we have that information here as far as who's engaged from which organization. And then I think we're going to try to um, to uh, to use that and implement that and in, in, as we go forward it, more for for these initiatives. Yeah, that would be great. I think I I did see that email come through, and I think that the sooner that communication comes out, probably the better. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe if there's a way to engage that group, in it sounded like the CAISO had some internal discussions back and forth on different options um, mm -hmm. to somehow loop the stakeholders in on that conversation as well, um, sooner rather than later. Okay. Yeah. So we'll take that back and then share anything else that you have going forward. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, if you don't mind, back to my original question, I think it was along the lines of what Tricia was talking about. Um, I was curious if there are any implications to the RSE test by waiting till this T minus 40 to submit the E tag. So it sounds like that, yes, there are going to be some implications, but maybe just to the advisory RSE test, um, since these tags are now not submitted till it sounds like after a couple of those are done. So if you can, one, confirm my understanding on that, and then I guess my general comment, if that is my, if that understanding is correct, is, you know, I, I think there's a lot of effort put into trying to align those advisory RSV tests as much as possible with reality and what would come out of the binding so those EIM entities can have the best information when they are making a lot of those decisions on how to, you know, ensure they can pass those tests. Um, so is my understanding correct that yes, there will be an impact to those RFE advisory tests because these tags are now not submitted until closer to actual real time? Thanks, Kelly. Um, Danny, do you want to jump in on that one? I believe Danny stepped away, Cindy. Mark Richardson here at California ISO. Um, in, in short, Kelly, for, for the T75 and T55 advisory tests, Understanding that a WEIM entity does represent a base transfer in their base schedules for these types of transactions to the extent that tag is not represented, their associated process would not pick that tag up and therefore not create the, the base schedule. Um, so it may result, depending on how long they are, may result in a failed test. Okay, a failed advisory test, even though once Correct. the tags are actually submitted, that would then pass them. Well, so I, I don't want to, I, I see Theoretically, a few, theoretically. Uh, the, yeah, so, so each WEI entity has their own associated processes, and I, and I want to respect 
um, those processes. I, I see a few WEI entities on this call, so to the extent they want to speak to that, um, I, I would encourage them to raise their hand so we could call on them to answer that directly. Um, but my understanding is any intertie transaction that is not tagged by that T57 cutoff is not represented on a base schedule and therefore would not be part of the T40 test. Mark, you are correct, which is my concern with only having a minute and a half to tag this if we're using this to balance and it's needed to help pass our test because we maybe don't have a generator to move potentially um, or we're trying right. to turn a generator on. And so this is why I think that it's so important that, that there are potential financial implications that the CAISO is putting on us by the timeline. And so that's where my frustration is. Again, I agree with the premise of needing to validate these. I'm 100% behind that. My, you know, real concern is with the how. How are we doing that? And, you know, like, is there something that we can do to either push that T57 deadline, EIM tagging deadline back to where now it's a little bit later or right before the T55? Is there something where we could push the T75 two or three minutes and then the HASP results a couple of minutes so we have five to seven minutes to react to this? Those are really the things that I'm looking at in how can we change this process to make it meet the reliability needs that you have, but also allow us to do our job to participate in EIM. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure, Tricia, and I appreciate that. And, um, you know, I would, if you wouldn't mind maybe giving me a ring after this, because I know I've been chatting with this quite a bit on, I would say, the last three or four uh, biweekly ops calls with the WEIM community, um, and, and there are some some ideas getting kicked around from a community perspective. Um, so I, I'd be happy to chat with those uh, with you to determine one, who from your organization is participating in those calls, and two, just to make sure you guys are engaged in those calls to the extent the uh, right individuals not present. Okay, um, yeah, I'll put my email in the chat. If you wanna shoot your number over, I will give you a call. I appreciate it, thank you. And I was just going to say that that others, um, you know, who are who have similar questions to Tricia should also contact Mark. Um, and I think his information is readily available, but we can provide it, it, it to anyone who doesn't have it as well. All right. Uh, Dottie, are there other questions? Yes, we have a few other hands raised. Corey, I see your hand is raised. Please come off mute and ask your question. Yeah, hey guys, um, I think Tricia already addressed most of our concerns and I think she speaks for a lot of people, especially those that have real time trading experience that know these timelines. I would just like to reiterate everything that she said, um, having tags come out at T minus 59 and needing to submit them by T minus 57 isn't difficult. It isn't uh, a small issue. It's actually virtually impossible because you got to wait on other BAs to approve the tags downstream. And this will result in us failing EIM every hour we are trying to export in real time. Um, so, Mark, I'll be sending you my information as well. I would love to to get with you and see how you guys plan on addressing this. Sure. And, and Corey, which which entity do you represent? I'm with the Energy Authority. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Mark. Uh, who who's next, Danny? We have Danny with their hand raised. You can come off mute and ask your question. Oh, I think Danny may have lowered their hand. No, no, no. I I just came off mute. Oh, okay. I didn't want the hand to still be up. Uh, so I, I think um, speaking on behalf of APS, we share share the same concerns that Trisha brought up and Corey as well. But I also wanted to address before we start talking about shifting timelines. Right, you got to think about the subsequent market runs that are occurring too. Right, so it's just not this timeline. Right, that impacts your. RTPD runs, et cetera. So when we do have that discussion, or if we do entertain that discussion, that has to be taken into account. This is more of an awareness statement, okay? Let's confirm right. in agreement Thanks. with that. Dottie, are there other questions? Um, I think there was, oh, wait, a hand just shot up. Um, you can come off mute and ask your question. Hi there. Uh, this is Kepin from uh, Trans Alternative Marketing. Um, so just so that I'm clear, in uh, for a real-time LPT, we would have to wait until the HASP results were published and then create a, 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 an e-tag for each hour that we wanted 
um, or that we were doing a real time LPT, right? So we couldn't do like a whole stretch of hours. It would be on an hourly basis. Is that accurate? That is my understanding. After each HASP run, you would submit your e tags for that particular hour. Is there any consideration on potentially having uh, California adjusting our tags the way they do for day ahead so that we could put out a full day's worth of real time? Like, because generally speaking, we'll have an idea of what we want to flow. But instead of us having to put out an hourly tag every hour, if there's a variation or a devi deviation rather from our uh, bids, that then you, California could adjust it, that might take a little bit of the work off of the real time scheduling or real time trading groups and give us just a little bit more breathing room. I'm not sure how people okay. would feel about that. My understanding is that uh, there are some NASB rules that are in play, but I think I'll, I'll open it up to the SMEs to see uh, if they have any additional remarks regarding that. Yeah, I, I, I can jump in here. This I, is I Danny. That, go ahead, Danny. Yeah, this is Danny with the ISO. And I, I think this just gets back to what the NASB rules require. I think we are happy to, if the rule set allowed, have tags sitting there and, and wait to approve them until there was a market award or potentially to be able to adjust it and approve tag to correspond to a market award. But with the way that the tagging rules currently work, that, that isn't something that we would be able to do. But to the extent that there's a desire to update those to ease this process, I think that, again, we'd look to partner with anybody to make this process more streamlined. Thank you very much. Yeah, just looking at potential ways to automate some of this is because it feels like it could become cumbersome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both. Um, next question, Patty. Yep. I see Manuel, you can come up and ask your question. I do have a question. The question is, when it comes to a tag, um, let's just say our ending 15 was awarded, but uh, we are going to be in the market through 24. Couldn't we just have a tag uh, after um, our 15 with zeros on it and adjust according to ADS dispatch? Those, my understanding is those tags would be denied, um, but let me, uh, who wants to jump in on that one? I mean, it, uh, I mean, I don't understand why they would be denied because they have zeros on it. So, so it's the miscellaneous field and, and the market award type. And we are asking you to represent in your tag the market award type that you have, which you won't know until after the market runs. So, you tag know. Time. Right, so, and that's why you're tagging after each hash run. It's that's when you know what your market award is, and that's what that this is the reliability benefit. It allows exactly. everyone to know what, what's actually there. Um, and, right, and but to so, his point, wouldn't a zero validate a zero? So even if it was for future hours, there should be no failed validation because zero to zero, there's nothing there. It's just a placeholder so that it's easier to put the tag out. So, so in the miscellaneous open. field, you put the type D A L P T. Why well, is we're in real time? R T L P T. Um, when it's validating, it, it, if you're putting that type for a market that hasn't run yet, the validation will reject it. It's not the zero; it's the type. But if we make the rule to where the validation would say zero zero. Like there's there's not a megawatt value there. So if the result is zero then pass the validation for the tag. But again, you're having us validate a tag for a market award that has not run yet. We're only doing this for the, this what screen we're on is the real time LPT. So everything else, all the other tags, you know, all the other transactions are, are not in this rubric, but we are requiring that you tag to the market result you're given and allowing you to do that in advance of the market run 
doesn't comport with the principle. But Danny, I don't know if you wanted to say more if you about communicating. Effectively. Put a 10 megawatts in there. I could see that it would validate. And I think his point is just so then we have a tag that we can extend. And so then once that award comes in, it's much quicker than creating a whole new tag to get it out there to try to meet these deadlines. And I, I mean, I, I understand what he's asking because that would help to speed up the process and simplify things. So if in that validation run, it could just say, if it says zero for a future hours, we're not going to deny that tag based on that zero. Now, if there's anything greater than zero in that tag, it will be an auto deny. And you read my mind. I guess, Trang, do you want to take a stab at this um, about why? I don't know if we have anyone on from the ITS team, but um, I think maybe you might be the best position to help move this conversation forward. Right. Um, I'm so, I'm sorry. I. Um... I don't, I uh, can't really repeat the question. I think that, right. Or, the question is really, why are we doing the validation the way we're doing it? We're, we're doing it on validation type. So, for example, um, we're, we're, if uh, the market hasn't run for two hours in advance, our, we're rejecting it because the validation types wouldn't match. It would be whatever was entered versus a null set to reflect the fact the market hasn't run. Um, and, Trisha, you may want to restate your question if I'm going to get it wrong, but what I understood was, why aren't we doing the validation with, with a megawatt value to allow for um, pre-tagging before the market run? But Tricia, maybe you should clarify before Trey answers. So um, I think, okay, your name is Manuel, but I don't think that's your name. Um, so what he had asked is that, you know, could they put in a tag with the megawatt value for the current hour? And then, you know, sometimes we'll put zeros as a place hour placeholder in hour 23 so that then that that same tag is valid for all of those hours. And what Heather is saying is that it would auto deny that zero. And what I'm asking is in the validation rules, could we put that if there is a megawatt value, if it is zero, if it is equal to zero, that it won't fail validation. But if you put any type of a megawatt value that it would automatically fail validation. So then the tag is already out there and it's easier and helping with the timeline for entities to just extend a tag or have that tag up ready to just punch in a megawatt value and that it's not creating a new tag every hour. So that somewhere in your validation rules that it just says if it's a future hour that hasn't gone through the, the HAS process, that if it's a zero and an LPT, that it will just, it won't fail validation. It won't kick the tag or deny the tag for that reason. But if there's anything greater than zero, it would deny the tag for those future hours. You know, um, that's a great question. And I, I don't think we have the right people on the phone to answer that, but definitely we'll take that back. And, and give it a consideration and respond to you on that. And everyone. And, and Trish, I just wanted to confirm, thank you for that great explanation. I now fully understand and I can take that back to the team as well. Thank you. All right, so are I there more questions? Add, can I add something oh. else? Sure. Well, it, is, it, it would be so extremely helpful if we could have tags live. Um, and, and and available to just tags as as the awards were being awarded, rather than creating a whole new tag for every ABS dispatch uh, market run. Um, being that we have all these time constraints, and if for some reason something happened that you couldn't do it for technical reasons or what have you, um, then you would not be following your ABS dispatch, and you get penalized. So that's always a concern as well. You're all good. To, oh, not all tags. Oh, send me a thing that says. Oh, you're I'm out. done. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll I'm get it right here. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I can't. Whoever was just speaking, Joshua, uh, did you have a comment? Okay. Uh, anyway, no, I'm sorry. That? I had you unmuted. I'm muted. <laughs> it, it happens. All right. Well, um, thank you for that. And I will definitely, <clears throat> will definitely take that back. All those considerations. This uh, this call is being recorded. We're definitely going to re-listen to all of this and and uh, put our thoughts together and provide a response to everyone, and consider it. Thank you. 
Um, are there more questions on the uh, on the phone? So I am looking and I currently don't see any additional hands raised. And then okay. I saw that um, in the chat, you had corresponded with Alex. He provided a little bit more um, background to his question. I'm not sure if you saw that. Yeah, okay. So I see that Alex had a question and now I'm going back to the question. Give me one second. What are the consequences if JHUD awards are not tagged within one hour of the RUC award being published? And then I, I responded um, about which, what consequences were they looking, uh, was Alex looking for? And he said, I thought I heard that the ISO was giving everyone one hour to tag their day ahead awards, regardless of when the RUC awards are being published. No, that, that's not, there's not a deadline to publish or uh, to um, tag your day ahead awards within one hour. So. I hope okay, that. thank you. Sorry, I, I thought I heard that, um, this is Alex at BPA, I thought I heard that you were giving everybody an hour, so I appreciate the, the clarity there. Okay. Well, Cynthia, I think it was your prior, sl uh, uh, many slides ago when we were on day ahead, um, somebody had asked what happens if the day ahead market results publish late. Sherry had uh, cl offered a clarifying <laughs> answer on if the day ahead publishes late, mm -hmm. and I believe that uh, it was that exchange that Alex is asking about, but Alex, you should verify. I want to be sure we give you the right answer. Yeah, that 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 was the exchange. There was con some concern about you know the the RUC awards being published late, and I thought that I had heard that. Um, yeah, we're still going to give everybody an hour to get their their tags in. So I was just, I was that's what piqued my interest. It sounds yeah, like so that, that is not a requirement, but there is in an earlier slide you say that for LPT. They had awards, they need to be pre scheduled. So I thought, okay, they need to be pre scheduled. And is there a deadline for when they need to get pre scheduled? And perhaps that okay. was the one hour. Okay. Um, let me, um, let me jump back here and I may, uh, Sherry, I may call on you again for this, but basically, <clears throat> I don't think I had a time in there, but after your day ahead, <laughs> Excuse me. After the day ahead publishes, you uh, and you need to submit your tag afterwards. I don't believe I gave a deadline of when that has to happen, but I think Sherry just up. Oh, Sherry said she just responded in the chat regarding that. Um, but I think you have ultimately. Well, I should just defer to Sherry's answer, which is the one hour to tag is related to auto adjustments that occur at 1530. If the market publishes any time before 1430, then the tags will auto adjust at 1530. If day ahead publishes after 1430, we want participants, we'll give participants a full hour to tag before auto adjustments are made. So 1445, we will make adjustments at 1630. Um, Sherry, do you want to expand on that or is that does anybody have anything else they want to ask about that so so i guess it has to get tagged in order to get auto adjusted so there there still is that deadline to get it tagged so it's susceptible to the auto adjust that's sure, right gonna... so it's really yeah it's just the auto adjustments that we currently do at 15:30 right so um and today it's more relevant because we don't do this um, uh, validation on these tags with r relation to what they've actually been awarded. Um, so they could pre-schedule, they could pre-tag something for 200 megawatts and if only 150 of it clears RUC, we at 1530, we automatically adjust those e-tags to 150. Tomorrow, after we implement this, you the tag won't even be there at all anyway. So the 1530 adjustments are really more pertinent to, um, you know, any any tags that are uh, firm imports for the ISO. Those will also get adjusted if they don't clear RUC. Um, wheels export, you know, PT exports, um, all of, all of those tags will still get automatically adjusted at 1530, or at least one, a minimum of one hour after RUC 
publishes. Generally speaking, participants adjust their own tags, um, but this is something that we implemented before uh, the validation piece of it, right? So this was all implemented last summer um, as, as part of track one. Thanks, Sherry. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, my understanding is there are more hands raised. So, Dottie, who's next? Yes, yeah, so I see um, four more hands just raised. So, I see Christine, you were first. You can come off mute and ask your question, please. Hi, this is Christine Monahan with SRP. I have a question that ties into our last conversation. So, the auto adjusting in real time that happens around 20 minutes after the hour, is that process still staying in place to adjust? any tags from day ahead that may not have cleared HASP? That is correct, yes. Okay, that thank you. That does not change. Thank you. So we do not need to worry about those tags being denied if they have now changed after HASP? Nope, that's correct. They'll just be automatically adjusted down to whatever cleared HASP. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next. Um, Janice, I see that your hand is raised. You can please come off me and ask your question. Actually, my question was just answered by Christine's question. I couldn't lower my hand quick enough. <laughs> okay, thank Perfect. you. Okay, um, Alicia, I see that your hand is raised. You can come off me and ask your question. Um, the question I have, you might have answered before. Um, when you submit as a day ahead tag, you have LPT, do you change the GF? P on the tag because now in your presentation you said after the rook now we know that is firm does that stay GFP once you get the rook award schedule and you retagging it for the exact amount? I believe it uh, it is still GFP. <clears throat> it's still a low priority um, tag by virtue of that it's not. Uh, on ETC, TOR, or any of those things that are high priority. If uh, if anybody else has anything to add to that, you can jump in. I think that no, that, that's, that was correct, Cynthia. That thank you. It's, it's GFP through and through unless it's backed by a, a resource that's pre-identified. Okay, thank you. All right, Gabby, and then we. I have another question. I see Monica, your hand is raised. You can come off mute and ask your question, please. Hi there. A uh, previous comment um, sparked a question. So on, you know, we tag double days, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So um, we're tagging some of these exports multiple days in advance and the HASP, you know, won't publish. You know, how does that align with the the pre-scheduled calendar and how we tag if i'm tagging you know sunday and monday on friday but the hasp isn't going to publish for multiple days i can't put the tag out so the the timeline is that you would submit the tag after those hasp results are published so um that that's correct it's not going to align with our tagging or our scheduling calendar. Okay. Um, does anybody want to jump in on that or re respond to that? Uh, this is Danny with the ISO. I, I, I think we do recognize that this will require changes from everybody, but getting back to the principle of this, the alternative is having kind of auto approved tags sitting there that the CAISO uh, does not know it can support, which is bad for CAISO BA reliability and SYNC BA reliability. And recognizing that this change is going to, or this is going to require changes from everybody, we think that it is the appropriate thing to do, which is why we well, made we, these uh, tariff changes last year. We need more time because the, the current change that was in, you know, in place, what was it, July of last year, we all know that. We all know that it's there. This is the timeline change now that's causing huge issue and that just that's just clicked for me um, i'm sitting here listening to this and the concerns in the real time but as a day ahead scheduler you know the fact that i can't 
tag on Friday for Sunday and Monday now that this is this is a huge, huge impact um, for our workflow and our days. And, and we recognize that, which is why we're, we're offering this training now, provide, providing the notice, as Trey noted, the VRS was out last summer. Please follow up with Mark Richardson or your client contact so we can, we can help everyone through these changes. Um, but when these were, when the policy was approved by the board, um, you know, and, and FERC to implement the scheduling priority to enhance the reliability so that KAIS, you are tagging only what has been awarded for the markets if you're in an LPT, only for LPTs. Um, we do recognize that does require changes to existing scheduling practices where folks were tagging without the market results. Um, so do follow up with your KISO teams to see how we, we can help everyone through this. We, we recognize that it is a burden. Thank you, Heather, and thank you for that comment. Um, are there more questions, Daddy? Uh, yes, I do see one more hand raised at this time. It's from Danny. You can come off mute and ask your question, please. Hi, this is uh, Danny from APS again. Um, hopefully, my audio sounds well. Um, question for you in, in real time. Um, if you flip one more slide, when you were giving out the, uh, the timeline, one of the things um, someone brought up, right, last July. So July 25th has took an extra 22 minutes to run before peak, right? For hour ending 16. Do we have a framework in place if has does take longer to run and we don't see these adjustments? Um, because last summer for a couple of hours here, and I'll just speak on behalf of APS, we got very late tag adjustments because the has run um took an additional 15, 20 minutes to complete due to um other issues, right? Multiple binding constraints, et cetera. Um, in this scenario, do we actually have an action plan if HASP does take extra long to run and those adjustments or cuts happen after an acceptable time frame? Do we have like a, a recourse? What do we do from a real time perspective? Because that's like the number one question we had last summer, right? We had to deploy load bias, other things. Um, it was just very hard to work through. Um, when scenarios like that occur has the iso given any thought to that like what's the backup plan in real time if has does take um a continuous long time to to run what if it takes a little longer and you don't even get the minute in 50 seconds um just want to know if there was some thought or if there's a framework being decided on what is what's the path that all of us have to follow if that does occur i'm going to hand so that one up yeah, Danny with the ISO, and I can take an uh, initial stab. And I think what you're identifying is the worst case scenario. Absolutely. Like, what do we do? Because we saw time. it happen. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I think from a reliability standpoint, to the extent that they could be supported, eventually it would get reflected in the RTSI at T40. But in this case, if the HASP isn't able to clear and get tagged in by that T57 deadline, then it would default to whatever the RUC Ruck Awards War, and mm -hmm. I, this isn't a good outcome, but this is kind of just inherent to the risk of trying to purchase spot market energy on an hour ahead basis out of the market. It, we do everything we can to make sure Hasp runs on time, but it, it, this is just a risk of real-time market energy purchases. All right, does anybody else have anything to add to that before we move on? Um, Cindy, Mark Richardson here again. Um, I, I just wanted to throw one thing out here, to, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, right? For, especially when we're talking about real time. What we're talking about here are transactions that were not represented in the day ahead market, right? So these are these are transactions that either A, didn't clear RUC at all, or B, have been decided decided in the real time horizon that you need to go out and procure more energy um, and like like you would today. So so we're really only talking about a subset of these low priority exports that would be impacted by this half timeline. Because if a clear day ahead, that tag would already be sitting there, it's in place, it's getting picked up by the WEIM entity processes and things of that nature. So we're really only talking about transactions that don't clear RUC and or our new transactions heading into the real-time market. 
Go ahead, Cindy. All right, thank you. Um, anything else? Okay, so I'm looking, I do not see any other hands raised. I saw that Elle asked a question in the chat and Mark, you got back about the tags being absent and award will not pass validation. Oh, I do see one hand that was just raised as I was reading that last comment. Tricia, um, you can come off mute and ask your question. Yeah, I was just gonna and ask, last time I, I say just, go ahead, we have five minutes. Go ahead, Trisha. Yeah, it's just a follow you. up from the last call. I had asked about um, if delayed tags would impact this so that we could potentially put out a delayed tag, which I don't believe delayed tags um, actually pass through market validation. So this might be a way of something that could actually help everybody you know especially i think the pre-schedule like day ahead which monica was talking about is if we were could put out the day ahead and then they could either adjust those to whatever the record is or have them with what their requested um amount megawatt amount was and so you guys were going to check into that and get back to me so i just was curious if anybody was able to look into the delayed tag situation okay i'm not sure who was on that call with you but um was anybody um, on that discussion that can respond to that. We'll have to get back to you on that one, Tricia. Sorry. All right. Um, are we all good, Dottie? Is there anything, uh, anything outstanding before we finish up the call? There is nothing outstanding. You're good to move forward. All right, thank you. So there's just a, a couple of other slides here. Let's get to the end. Uh, this is just a reminder of uh, what the key takeaway from the class was. I don't think I need to go over it again. But also, what do you need to do if you submit those export e-tags or if you have concerns about this? First of all, and I mentioned this before, you can start um, working on uh, revising your process or begin submitting these e tags in production according to the tagging guidelines. There's nothing preventing you from uh, doing that now. I'd also encourage you to attend the RSCE Phase 2 Track 2 Refresher Training, which is on Thursday, next Thursday, uh, February 22nd from 9 to 10. Um, I'm going to be uh, reviewing the entire RSCE initiative. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on this uh, piece again. Um, I'm not going to go into as much detail uh, because we have this forum for that, but uh, we will talk about it. So you'll have another opportunity. Um, please sign up and participate in the market simulation and the weekly market simulation forums. And as was mentioned throughout, submit your city tickets if you have questions. So uh, I really want to thank you all for joining. Um, just uh, here, there's reference links here that you all can uh, use to find out more information. And just one other thing is that I mentioned that we will be posting the, the audio uh, video of this presentation as soon as I get it later today or tomorrow. And I'm also hoping that you can uh, complete the survey that's going to be sent to you um, in a little bit. And this will help us improve our future training. Um, let us know what we did well and what we can improve on with regard to the training and the trainer. So I um, appreciate your time and I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Um, I guess I'll open it up to see if there are any final questions. So um, there were a few questions in the chat, one from Elle. Um, said, okay, so day ahead schedulers are working seven days and holidays. Am I understanding this correctly? I, who wants to take that question? Yeah, I, I mean, I think I- Go ahead, Mark, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I, was, I, I think I understand the, the point of the comment um, mm -hmm. based on these rules tags cannot be represented until there's an associated award with it. Uh, and, I, and I think that kind of depends on how the associated scheduling coordinator decides to, to set up their, you know, their support staff to, to kind of be in the line with these rules. Okay. 
Thank you. And then uh, Tricia, I see your question about when the CMRI, oh, the CMRI screens would be populated. Um, Trey, thanks for answering that. Um, we're gonna, when uh, RSCE phase two track two goes live, scheduled for April 15th, um, those, uh, those new reports in CMRI will start populating. So if we were gonna try to like, you know, change our practices before April 1st, those wouldn't be available for us to do so. Uh, Trisha, Mark here. No, so, so so the market sim starts on February 26th. Okay. So starting February 26th in a non-prod environment, you will have an opportunity to, to validate this functionality and test it um, to ensure you guys have associated processes in place for to, to support that production change. I hope that helps. Perfect, that's where I was going with that. Thanks, Mark. Okay, and thank you all. Uh, are, Dadia, is there anything else? Um, there was one question that was just put in the chat by um, Kaden. Um, they state, I had previously submitted this question, furthering on the conversation, why do approved tags at zero megawatts after they are adjusted down at market run differ from no tags at all in terms of ensuring KISO reliability? Is the KISO not able to see those volumes after the tag is adjusted down? I think this seems to arise from Trisha's earlier implementation question and suggestion she offered us that we need to run down with our teams about um, some of the validation rules. Um, I think we committed to look into that. I don't know if that's something we've explored. This is the first I was hearing of it. Um, I think it's a great suggestion. We'll run it down right after this call. I think that's the question that's being asked, but Kaden, I welcome um, your input. Yep. Thank you all for for bringing up uh, your concerns. We will appreciate we do appreciate them, and we'll take them back, and we'll definitely uh, get back to everyone on the on these. So thank you very much. Um, any additional questions, Daddy? Nope, none at this time. All right. Well, I, I know we ran over a little bit. I appreciate all your time. This was I. I a really productive session and I hope you learned something from it and uh, we certainly will take back your concerns and respond to everyone. So um, thank you and I think we are done for today. Have a good lunch or if, the, if you're in this time zone or um, whatever may come next. Thank you. <laughs>